SketchUp 2022 just landed. Let's have a look. In this video, I'm going to review SketchUp Pro 2022 from my perspective, that of a residential designer who uses SketchUp Pro for every phase of the design process, even construction documents. I'm gonna show you where to find the new features, demonstrate how to use them, and offer an opinion on how they impact my workflow. I'm not gonna pull any punches on this review. When you hear the bell, the gloves come off. Let's go. Our first new feature is Search SketchUp, which has already been vetted in SketchUp for web. This feature allows you to quickly find and activate commands by typing a tool name like line or even a concept like sketch. Use the arrow keys to sort through the list and hit enter to activate the selected command. This feature is super handy for less common commands that you don't have a shortcut for and might not warrant keeping the toolbar open. Something that is unique about this feature on the desktop version is that it includes extensions. The default keyboard shortcut is Shift S. So a search for Condoc brings up the equivalent of our toolbar without taking up screen space. Pretty slick. This feature is a winner. Thumbs up. The new tag tool can be found on the large tool set and on the tags dialog next to a new color by tag toggle, which I'm gonna turn on for this demo. Here's how the tag tool works. Activate the tag tool, click on a tag in the tags dialog to select it, then click on an entity to apply the selected tag. If you first select several entities, the selected tag is applied to all with one click. This new tool has keyboard shortcuts similar to the paint bucket tool. Tap the Alt key, Command on Mac, to sample a tag from an entity. This selects the tag in the tags dialog. Tap the shift key to toggle replace existing. This will apply the selected tag to all entities that share a tag with the clicked entity. Tap control, option on Mac, to toggle tag all instances, which reaches through all modeling contexts to apply the tag to the outside of all component instances. First, let's be clear about what tags actually are. They're layers. When layers were renamed to tags in SketchUp 2020, there was no new functionality added, and this new tag tool doesn't add functionality either. It's just another way to assign a layer or tag to an entity in SketchUp. So this new feature is just a layer painting tool, which is not exactly a novel idea. You could have bought this functionality on the extension warehouse five years ago for 10 bucks. Why would I wanna paint tags anyway? Is it any faster than selecting several entities and assigning a tag through a dropdown? Not really. When is the last time you needed to simultaneously assign a tag to all component instances? Never. Isn't that the point of components anyway? When I see new tools like this, it makes me think that SketchUp doesn't know how to use their own software, or maybe they don't understand how professionals are actually using it. I mean, we are talking about SketchUp Pro here, desktop version, not free. I can't even rate this feature. No thumbs up, no thumbs down. This one gets a face palm. I simply don't need this tool. Here's why. I've already solved this tagging issue with the model organization guides. With our MOGs, you will never have to assign a tag again. On top of that, you'll never have to make nested groups either because I already made them for you. There's a link in the description that will take you to the MOG article in our Conduct knowledge base. It's got everything you need to get started. If you really want to make the MOG sing, then grab a free trial of our Conduct Tools extension to automate tags, styles, and scenes that net beautiful construction documents. Let's move on. The two-point and three-point arc tools got an update. We now have a tangent inference lock. Just tap Alt to activate it. This inference lock eliminates the second click to set the bulge when drawing multiple arcs. I don't draw that many arcs, so I probably won't use these new features, but it is an improvement that eliminates some clicks, which is appreciated. Fist bump for the effort. The Mac M1 platform was introduced in late 2020. SketchUp 22 is delivered with a universal installer that enables SketchUp Pro to run natively on the M1 hardware platform. Even though this has zero impact on my Windows machine, I'm happy for you Mac users. Give it a thumbs up. Another performance claim in SketchUp 22 is that explode times have been cut in half for large groups. Let's test it. Here's the same model opened in SketchUp 21 on the left and in SketchUp 22 on the right. Ready, set, go. What took more than a minute in SketchUp 21 took only five seconds in SketchUp 22. This lets me know they are peeking under the hood and tuning things up. Keep it coming, thumbs up. If you are concerned about performance, I can show you how to get more out of your old machine by leveraging technique over hardware. In other words, build lighter, more efficient models that ask less of your computer. Check out my course at sketchupworkflow.com. Here's a quick one. 
The ability to pre-lock an axis was added to several more tools in the last 2021 release. In 2022, you will notice that the tooltips confirm a pre-locked inference. Uh, eh. Up next, the freehand tool got some attention in SketchUp 2022. I forget this tool even existed. Activate the freehand tool from the large tool set. You can now lock an axis with arrow keys before starting the command. Click and drag to create a sloppy, unpredictable line with little to no accuracy. Release the click to finish the line, and if you get lucky, it might close the surface. Also new in 2022, you can tap the control and alt keys to adjust the amount of segments to make these messy lines heavier. Another new addition is the ability to draw across several planes. Wow. I mean, if I don't have something nice to say, I shouldn't say it at all. This tool sucks. Always has, always will. It's sloppy, unpredictable, and inaccurate. Everything I'm not looking for in a modeling program. There's simply nothing you could add to its functionality that would change my mind. Take that back. Take a look at Tools on Surface, Freehand on Surface, which is free, has been around forever, and works great for breaking up textures on terrain. Why are we spending time on the Freehand tool? SketchUp 2022 has an improved picking logic. So if section planes are visible, the entities they obscure are still pickable. You can still select a section plane by clicking on the edge or the section plane symbol. I don't think the biggest issue at hand is the section planes selection behavior. It's more that it's such a hassle to hide the section planes that I don't need. If I were running the show over there, I would have explored commands like isolate active section plane or hide inactive section plane. It's a small improvement, but worth a fist bump. Camera clipping has long been a thorn in my side. I know you've experienced this too. SketchUp 2022 practically eliminates all frustrating clipping plane issues. Like when switching to a parallel projection camera view, a more common scenario is when you're working on a small object within a vast model. Have you ever tried to zoom in and you just couldn't get close enough to work on it? Well, now when you use the hide rest of model command, SketchUp reinterprets the view to display geometry properly. At first glance, camera clipping seems to be a thing of the past. I use hide rest of model all the time to isolate what I'm working on. You should too. Let's add a shortcut. Click the window dropdown Choose Preferences, Shortcuts. Type Hide Rest into the filter. Then, under Add Shortcut, hold the Control key and tap H, or enter whatever shortcut you like. Click the plus sign, then click OK. I can't live without this one. A big thumbs up on finally knocking out this annoying clipping plane issue. The next new feature is Lasso Select. You will find this tool on the large tool set right next to the familiar Select tool. Once activated, click and drag clockwise for a window bounding loop. Notice the solid line. This selects only those entities fully contained in the selection. Or click and drag counterclockwise for a crossing boundary loop. Notice the dashed line. This selects entities that are fully and partially contained in the selection. Just like with the classic select tool, you can pick one entity at a time and there are all of the same modifier keys to add to, subtract from, and invert your selections. If you need to jog your memory, these modifier keys are listed at the bottom left corner of the screen. I've lived without this tool for 15 years. And during that time, I've developed a strong affinity for the rectangular selection tool. It's what I'm used to. You could argue that the lasso selection is more precise, but the rectangular selection is so much faster for making those quick right to left select alls. This new tool will not find its way into my workflow anytime soon. Thumbs down. New in 2022, standard views now respect the model axes rather than the origin. So now when you click the camera drop down and choose top, bottom, front, back, left, right, or ISO, these views will line up with the current axes. This makes it easier to predict which view you are going to get, but truth be told, I haven't used these in quite some time. Typically, I would just right click on a surface and choose align view. So I don't have to guess at which standard view I actually need, or even better yet, Use the Condoc Elevation tool to snapshot scenes since it automatically lines my camera up with the wall I click on and names my scenes in sequential order, assigns a style, and sets my shadows to a perfect 45 degrees. Unfortunately, I think SketchUp spent time developing a feature that nobody really needs. Thumbs down. Even the tape measure tool got a little love in this release. Now, both the tooltips and measurements box provide previews for length, area, and coordinates. Another small improvement, when you click to set a guide or take a measurement, the measurements box will now hold that value, even if you move your cursor. When view guides is toggled off, 
creating a new guide now toggles guide visibility on. I wasn't even all that aware of these shortcomings with the tape measure tool, but I'm sure these improvements will help eliminate frustrations from the users. So thumbs up. Check out the new scene search. Just click the magnifying glass to the left of the scene tabs, then start typing to filter the scenes in your model. For instance, I can search for plan to see all of my planned scenes, or dig in deeper by typing construction plan. Use the arrow keys to navigate the list, then press enter to jump to that scene. This new feature keeps me out of the scenes dialog and saves me from the tedious task of clicking through the scene tabs at the top of the screen one at a time. Now for the bad news, there's no keyboard shortcut. What a missed opportunity. I still give this feature a big thumbs up. I will use this. Overall, SketchUp 2022 is a solid release. I give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and grab that upgrade. You're already paying for it anyway. Before you get busy sorting out your plugins and shortcuts, check out my review of Layout 2022. I would say it's honest. I'll see you in there.